Hello and welcome to Telescopes and Cameras with Chris. Today I wanted to talk about the Panasonic G80, also known as the G85. Um, when I bought this camera a few months ago, um, astrophotography wasn't really on my agenda at all with it because it's a micro four third sensor. But having used it for several months now, I've noticed quite a few features of it that actually lend themselves quite nicely to astrophotography and could actually make it quite easy for someone getting into it. It may not give you like the cleanest images available, but there's a lot about this camera that I've noticed that could just make it easier for people to take pictures in the first place. And, and having a picture is much better than no picture because you've just found the whole process too difficult. So I've compiled 10 different aspects of the Panasonic G80 that I feel lend themselves nicely to astrophotography. So number one, a nice feature of this is something called Starlight AF that if you, for example, put it on a tripod in your garden, point it up at the stars, um, put it in auto mode, you can off press the shot halfway down and it will automatically go into something called Starlight AF mode where it will ramp up the ISO, um, the sensitivity to light, but it will slow down the focus and this enables it to accurately autofocus on stars. So you don't, I mean, typically what you have to do normally is you have to manually focus on a star, take an exposure, pinch the screen, stretch it to zoom, and then just check your focus and repeat until you've got kind of a focus that you're happy with. But this is, I've just found it dead easy. Just keep it in auto, point it up at the stars on a tripod or an equatorial mount, um, press the shutter off in, it will automatically go onto the low light mode, into starlight AF mode, and it will just focus on a star. Job done, that's one of the hardest bits of astrophotography done and dusted there. And then all you can do is switch to the manual focus on the, on the camera, on the, on the lever there, switch it to uh, manual focus, MF, and then that focus is then locked. Um, a second feature I want to talk about is the flippy screen and this is it really invaluable really when we're talking about astrophotography because quite often you're pointing the camera at very steep angles towards zenith either on a tripod or on an equatorial tracking mount so the camera could be pointed up like that and if you've got a fixed screen you've got to get right down and look underneath what the screen's doing but with this just flip out the screen, it can rotate in any position. So if you're pointing towards Zenith, you can, you can point it like that. And you can just see really clearly what's going on. Third thing I've noticed about this camera, which is really useful for astrophotography, is the fact that the body and the kit lens that you can buy with this camera are both weather sealed. And I've been doing astrophotography for years with telescopes and cameras mainly. Um, and I know, I've noticed in that time that, especially in the UK where it's quite damp, your equipment gets covered in dew. And it's obviously a, a worry with electronics that you're gonna get that dew into the electronics of your camera and it's gonna cause some harm. But you don't need to worry so much with this camera. You can leave it set up outside and the dew can form on it and it should, be, it should survive it quite nicely. The lens is also weather sealed. The fourth thing I want to talk about is the in-body image stabilisation that this camera has, known as IBIS. Um, this feature is really useful for video modes in daytime, but I think it's got a good possibility for astrophotography because astrophotography relies on taking long exposures of a patch of sky at night and for nothing to be knocked at all. So if you're taking an exposure, a single exposure of say eight to 10 seconds and the wind sort of blows and shakes your tripod or you knock it, then the IBIS can only really help sort of like reduce that movement really and stop the stars from trailing or being smeared across your sensor, so to speak. Number five, five, the fifth thing I've noticed is the camera it's very sharp and that's because it doesn't contain an anti-alice filter, low pass filter. And this, this is basically something that camera manufacturers include in their cameras 
to prevent something called mor moray, which is kind of like a, a pattern that you notice during videoing, or on, or on like, um, you can see it on sort of like clothing that's got quite a lot of stripes on, and it kind of shimmers very strangely. Um, so they put a um, anti-alice filter in a lot of cameras, but it does make it a bit softer. It deliberately softens the image and quite possibly reduces the bandwidth of light coming in to the camera. Um, with this camera, they've had, they've had that removed. They don't, it doesn't have an anti-alice filter. And this can only be a benefit to astrophotography because there's no um, bespoke, there's no dedicated astronomy camera on the market that I know of that, that contains an anti-alice filter. Um, so they, they can't be something that's that's good for astrophotography. All they can do is reduce the amount of light coming in and make it less sharp. Number six, um, basically you can get round the Micro Four Third sensor by just fitting a faster lens. And the beauty of the Micro, micro Four Third system is that the, the lenses are, are quite affordable. I mean, there's some really good lenses out there. There's the, the lower, uh, 7.5 mil f2 and that's supposed to be pretty remarkable for astrophotography and there's some very cheap lenses that are prime lenses that are fast like the the Panasonic 20 and 25 mil f 1.7s they're, they're very affordable and will and will obviously do a good they won't be the sharpest lenses but they'll do a good job of getting light into the camera you can spend more money on like the the Leica lenses, I think there's like some 1.4s, which are Panasonic Leica, which are obviously very good quality, but they're still quite affordable. They're not they're not thousands of of um, pounds or dollars. They're they're hundreds rather than thousands. Losing count now. Where am I? Number number seven. Number seven. Um, this body, this Panasonic G80, has inbuilt time lapse, which you can use for night lapses. Um, if you have the mechanical shutter set as opposed to the electronic shutter, you can take um, bulb exposures for as long as you like. Um, but but for night lapses, I found it really quite good. A bit noisy at eye high so, but as long as you keep the ISO low and um, the noise reduction on, um, it's it's pretty good. So night lapses are another um, form of astrophotography that I'm I'm enjoying quite a lot at the moment. Where are we? Number eight. Um, there is actually an interesting advantage of having a small sensor that I've, I've noticed over the years by doing pure astrophotography with specialist cameras for astronomy and telescopes, and that's that the smaller sensors you don't need to fit things like coma correctors because you're only really taking the light from the very centre of the optics where there's less aberrations, there's less defect the the the, the view's more orthoscopic. The there's no aberrations in this generally in the centre of lenses. Even even quite cheap lenses, they're pretty good. You'll notice that the centre is usually the sharpest bit of the lens. And if you've got a small sensor behind behind that lens, and it's um, only capturing the light from the centre of that lens, then you your um, your images look nice from corner to corner. If you put a full frame camera on a full frame lens. Um, your your aberrations, you'll see those towards, the, especially on things like stars that are point sources of light. You'll you'll see things like coma, where the you'll see sort of like the stars sort of like trail off into sort of comet shapes. It's almost like a, a warp drive effect. If you've got really bad lens or bad telescope that with not well corrected optics towards the edge, you you get this sort of like bending of the light and the the distortion of the stars towards the edge. But if you've got a very small sensor. You, you're basically already cropping the, the edges of the frame out. Um, if you've got a, a lens that's made for micro four thirds, you're probably projecting all that light onto every every pixel of that sensor. But if you're if you're using say vintage glass and you're using full frame vintage full frame lenses, and you're using them on micro micro four thirds, you're very likely that the the, the badly affected areas of the lens towards the edge aren't being projected onto your sensor. You're just getting the nice clean central por portion where there's there's not many aberrations or de defects in the image. So micro four thirds, you you don't need to take things like 
flat fields for vignetting and um, is a lot less involved in making your image look nice from that point of view. Um, when I was doing astrophotography it was just standard and using a big sensor like a, a, a Canon, I used to use modded Canon APS-C cameras like the, the 1100D or I used to rip filters out of the, the old 350Ds back in the day so they were full spectrum um, but you'd have to use a coma corrector to get round the, the curvature of the optics but if I put a very small chip on that that telescope or that lens, you didn't need to use a coma corrector, you're just using the central portion of, of the, the optics which are very sharp. Number nine, the ninth thing I think is quite useful for astrophotography and is that when you're doing astrophotography with a camera and a lens or a camera and a telescope, you've either got it on a tripod for short sort of wide field exposures or you've got it on an equatorial mount that tracks with the rotation of the earth. The last thing you want to be doing if, you're, if your SD card fills up is just to take the whole thing apart to get to the, the battery compartment to also get to the SD card. But on this camera you've got a, a side compartment so you can leave your camera set up and you can change out the, the SD card in the side. Number 10, the final thing, um, it, it's just a very light system and if you're using an uh, a tripod or an equatorial mount, as I've mentioned before, the, the lighter of the system on that, the better. If, you're, if you've got an equatorial mount with a limited payload of 5 kilograms or 3 kilograms, <clears throat> if your camera is very light and your lens is very light, like with the Micro Four Third system, it, it is a very compact system, you put in less pressure on the motors, uh, keeping track of the rotation of the earth. There's less body for the wind to catch to create vibrations and it's just generally easier as well to take out to a dark site and set up. You can travel a bit lighter as opposed to a full frame with a big lens. You'd probably need a slightly bigger equatorial tracking platform, a more sturdy equatorial tracking platform with a very big setup. But this you can use it on a very lightweight setup. That concludes the 10 aspects of the Panasonic G80 I feel are useful for astrophotography. As said, um, it's a bit controversial talking about a micro four thirds for astrophotography. They're not really seen as cameras you'd, you'd jump for for doing astrophotography because, the, as mentioned, the, the sensors tend to be more noisy for a equivalent exposure compared to full frame or APS-C. Um, but, you know, I've, I've noticed these features are really good and I just think it deserved a bit of a shout out really. Any comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content, subscribe for more. Thank you.